Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, mm-hmm. Link is wearing sunglasses. Well, I'm wearing my Hawaiian vacation glasses, which have a tent that is somewhere between oh, come on, normal sunglasses. glasses but, and sunglasses. I mean, they're sunglasses. But they're not tinted to the point where I can't wear them in this dimly lit room and totally see everything I need to see of you. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. But they're, I mean, they're sun, they're they're lightly tinted sunglasses. Yeah, but the, I'm I'm trying to make this a part of my life moving forward because this was my life in Hawaii on my Maui vacation, which I'm going to tell you all about, Rhett, and you, dear listener. So, are you trying to capture the vacation spirit into? More of your, is that the, is that why you're wearing the glasses or is it like no I think I'm about, I'm gonna become a guy who wears sunglasses inside how could you tell like Elton John yeah okay I think I could oh you could do anything you want to thank you because I really like but these people will glasses. draw conclusions that's all I'm saying I really like these glasses because they're big and they're I mean they have progressive lenses in them I can read with them and they're you know they're indoor outdoor sunglasses. Well, Question you've made mark? them that. <laughs> You're definitely wearing them. No, yeah, they're not too dark so that you have to take them off when you come inside. But I'm just acknowledging the fact that it is a it is a choice. Did I break your concentration? It is a it is a choice that you like if we me and you went to a meeting and there was a guy that we met with right. and he was wearing those glasses inside. Yeah. It would be the first thing we talked about after we left the meeting. Be like, "Oh, you wear sunglasses inside." That's what we would do. I'm but just, if if the other parts of that personality lined up in a certain way, then our follow-up would be, but you know what? I think he pulls it off. <laughs> I'm, I am yeah. secretly hoping, I didn't want to talk about it. If he's it. Roy Orbison? <laughs> <laughs> if he's Roy Orbison, yes. Why did Roy Orbison wear sunglasses at all times? Well, I think I, it was a- I always thought that he was um, visually impaired and that was why he wore the sunglasses. Was he? Um, I think he did have some visual impairment, but I, I just think that he was self-conscious about the way he looked without sunglasses. You know, are you self-conscious about the way you look without sunglasses? <laughs> no. Is that, is no. that what it is? I mean, I, I'm conscious of what I look like without glasses. And I was constantly reminded of that because I went on vacation with the older version of myself, AKA my father. Does he wear contacts? Uh, no, he has no uh, problem. He has no- Vision issues. Prescription. That's very unusual for a 70 year old man. I know. Wow. And he doesn't have nearly as much gray hair as I do. I got that from my so mom. So you're gonna tell us all about your, your, your vacation. Yeah, I am. Before you tell us about your vacation, we do want to remind you about the fact that we are doing Good Mythical Evening again. If you forgot, <laughs> how could you? I don't remember all of it. Good Mythical Evening is when um, we take all of the constraints that we have to have on ourselves off in order to have, you know, Good Mythical Morning, you guys gotta be like brand safe and friendly and you gotta be able to do something that like you can put on YouTube but Good Mythical Evening is if you take all the right-headedness out of us. And you go buck wild. And you give us some alcohol. Hey, you like to party? Uh, that's what Good Mythical Evening is. Party doing with again. us. September 1st, exclusively on Moment House. Get your tickets at goodmythicalevening.com. There's multiple packages for pre-show and Good Mythical More, etc. So I wanna tell you all about my vacation. Uh, we did go to Maui. Um, you know, it, I had made the decision to do to do this trip pre-pandemic, and really, I think I trace it all the way back to your family trip to Scotland, where you took your you took your parents and your brother and his entire family. It, that really got me thinking. You know, I can do a vacation and bring bring some of my family along too. I think that would I think that would honor them. I think they'd like it. So we put into motion. This plan. Did anybody take, break any bones? My dad. Nobody broke any bones. Good. Um. Well, I mean, there was one injury. Oh. I'll tell you about it. Uh, we put the plan in motion to take my dad and Nancy, and um, 
So once we started, once we started filming Dispatches from Myrtle Beach and recording that podcast, uh, which if you want to listen to his perspective on our vacation, that episode of Dispatches is already out. But there's plenty of stuff that I didn't get to talk with my dad about that I want to talk to you about. And I can, you know, give you some of the inside scoop that I did that I didn't get to in that episode. Okay. I got two podcasts I gotta juggle. Yeah, now, this is man. gonna make your life difficult. This is making my life difficult. But um I did I on dispatches I, I kept saying, Well, Dad, if you do the good a j- good job, I'm gonna take you to Hawaii. But really we had been wanting to go for years. It's just because of the pandemic we weren't able to do that. Right. And then also for like Christy's sister and her husband and their kids, we were like planning another trip to go to Disney with them. That got eradicated with the pandemic too. And we haven't put those plans back in motion, mm. um, but we hope to at some point. But let, just let me tell you, I was telling Christy yesterday, I was like, you know what? I think this Hawaii trip was one of the best vacations I've ever been on. Wow, really? Yeah, it was like the perfect balance of doing stuff and not having stuff to do. You know, we we, we booked a, a spot at this at a resort uh, on Walea down there in the uh, southwestern part of Maui. You ever been to Maui? I have not. I've been to the Big Island and to Kauai. But right. Not, not. Well, you and I went to Kauai with our families together yeah. many years ago. So I was comparing it a lot to uh, Kauai when, we, when we're like driving around Maui. Um, we stayed at a beach resort. We stayed at this spot where it was big enough for like dad and Nancy to have a room and Chris to have a room and then, you know, the kids to sort things out. So it was like, it was, it was, a, it was a nice spot. We had space and where people could go and retreat into their own zone. When you have a 19 year old and a 17 year old, you, you want to be able to like, give them their own space. Yeah. So I knew that was key. And then I knew that making plans, but then making non-plans was important. And I think all of that really came to fruition. Uh, in terms of making this the perfect balance of just a nice, well-needed vacation away. Are you like, are you looking at your thigh? What are you doing with your hand down I'm there? I'm just twiddling my thumbs around oh, this thing. I thought you were looking at your phone, then I saw your phone there. No, I'm twiddling this. Hey, but, but, okay, all right. Just making sure I'm still here. I just didn't know if you were into what I was saying. Oh, I'm so into it. You plan the perfect vacation. Like, I don't know if you're scratching just, your balls. Just the, the perfect balance of doing and not doing. I mean, the big I've been question- listening the whole time. <laughs> Honestly, was what is it gonna be like to take Dad and Nancy on this thing? Granddaddy and Nana. But you just said it be was around. the best vacation. So, do you think it but had to do not, with the fact that they were that. there? Yeah, that was the big question. Because Martin. people, guests change your family dynamic, and often they change the family dynamic for the best. I have found that when we travel, are on a better behavior, and when there's a friend of a one of the kids brings a friend, yes. Nobody shows their ass as much. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody just does something stupid, embarrassing, just as a complete dipshit because right. there's some there's a, there's there's somebody who's not family there. Yep. So do you think that happened? I do think that was the key to it. Plus the fact that Dad and Nancy are super laid back. Like mm-hmm. they were super happy to be there. They don't add stress to the situation. They were along for the ride, which is a They're- lot to say for you know. Uh, aging parents, I, I, I would think. There was no control of anything energy. It was like, hey, I'm gonna treat you guys to coming on this voyage with us, you know, and you're gonna love it. And then, you know, by the end, the only thing dad said about the halfway point was, you think I, maybe I could play golf? And I was like, well, I didn't know if it was too late, Dad. I didn't set anything like that up because I don't play golf, honestly. I'm sorry if that's a little selfish. I should have gone. But that did work out. And as he talked about on dispatches, that was a highlight for him is taking Lincoln golfing. But yeah, we, I mean, we really did have a good time. And it, it was a test of our, our relationship to have him there because you are living under the same roof with these people. Uh, that you never live with. You don't know how it's going to be. They, but they were they were cool. They were laid back. They were having a good time. And so I'm happy to report that it he, all worked out. He's still out. your dad. Also, nine days was like a generous amount of time. So just in terms of like stipulations. Really? I was going to, I was planning on 14 days. Two weeks is what that is, right? So you were ready to come home at nine, day nine? I was. 
Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's pr- I, I would say that's pretty typical. When you're in the same place. Yeah. Uh, in, were you, uh, no, were you eating the same breakfast every day? I The breakfast got old. It was a good breakfast, like. You can, I mean, nine days of the same buffet. breakfast. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, uh, obviously these are privileged problems, but I'm just saying. At a certain, yeah, at a certain point, I wasn't really getting out of bed for the breakfast, you know what I'm saying? Right. The cool thing about going to Hawaii is that there's three hours uh, behind. So when I decided to wake up, it was like early in the morning. There's something, I, just, I felt this like superiority of like being up so early on vacation, like seeing this, I literally seeing the sunrise. Every day? The first. What time are we talking the, about? The first few days. Like, just because it was the time change. Yeah, I mean, I get up at 5.30 and it feels like 8.30. And like I went out there and did some paddle boarding. There was a beach right out there, and you could go out there and just get a get some snorkel gear, and go around this little reefish type area. And there were sea turtles right there, mm. dude. Yeah, I've never freaking s- snorkeled with a sea turtle. Did you touch them? Because that's a ten thousand dollar fine. I did not like touch them. I just looked at them, and they were some of them were like resting on the bottom, just sleeping. And some of them were just like floating. And you could just like swim around them and they were just like used to it. They didn't care. They were happy. Were any happy wa- as a pig in a blanket. Any waves for paddle boarding? Not right there. Like driving around to other sections of the island, there was, um, I saw some people, a lot of people surfing and some people doing some stand up paddle board surfing, but it, Early enough, it was calm enough to do some stand-up paddleboarding, but not really with surfing. It that really wasn't the opportunity right there, in in front of us. But I I got a I hate the dog Maui. Um, it was the beaches were beautiful, and there's but it's just not it's it's not the same vibe as Kauai. Kauai was like it's so jungly and like these like dramatic green mountains just like exploding out of the ocean everywhere. And there's like sh- sheer drop-offs. Maui is more of like, you got this one, there's like two islands that are kind of connected basically into one island. So you can easily imagine how they were each made by their own volcano. But there was a one inactive, I don't even think you'd call it dormant, it's just over. This volcano, nothing done. else to see here. It's a done volcano. It's nowhere near active. Spent. Haleakala, that formed the majority of Maui, and so it's just looming in the center. No matter where you drive around, you look and it's like, it's, there's just clouds. It's like this one mountain volcano that just goes up into the clouds. But it has to be more lush than and, the Big Island. And there's, well, I haven't been there. But the Big Island is like just, there's like very large swaths of it that are just barren landscape. A lot of it was, of Maui was uh, farmed for pineapples, I believe. So there was a lot of it that was just like deforested. And so now there's, um, you know, there's like an old sugar plantation and there's like remnants of where they, farmed pineapples, but it just kind of leaves it more of, the, the focal point is the one volcano. It's not like in Kauai where you're like driving through these undulating roads around these like huge mountains. It's just not that type of a hiking destination place. Now, on the other side of the island from us, there's um, there's a town called Hana, and then there's this one two-lane undulating road that you can drive, and you basically takes you to the, the road to Hana. The road to Hana it takes almost all day, and I was reading about that, and like basically marriages die on this road. Yeah, yeah people get car sick, and people get car sick, yeah, especially the Neils. You watch Everybody out. in the Neil family gets car sick. I mean, if I go around three curves, I'm like Christy, don't you be on your phone. Yeah. Like the amount of times on any type of road trip I've had to pull over and had Chrissy just just open the door, run a few feet and just vomit is just like I could I mean I could I could sketch it I, with in detail I've seen it so many times. But please don't. It's so I was like there ain't no way we're going on this road to Hana. So the 
I mean, it was, it would have a day of us doing something and then a day of us chilling out. Uh, day one, take a look at dad. This is day one? Day one, baby. This is within a few hours of us getting to Maui. He's just laying out on a lounger. You realize this is your future. Sleeping. This is I my mean, future. Th- actually, in many ways, this is your present. <laughs> he makes the same exact face that you make when you fall asleep. Yeah, his mouth is open. And I assume- It's like the picture you he, take he, of me every time I'm sleeping as- on a plane. He falls asleep as quickly as you, I assume. You see that necklace he's wearing? That's what they give you when you show up. Like, that's literally how quick he just he, he went drank in, a drink. He, he went into vacation mode so fast. I love it. And the one thing that- Had he, he, had he been to Hawaii ever? He had been to Hawaii before, yeah. I was gonna ask, is it, is, does, he, does he still call it Hawaii? It's the, it's, a, it's the same place. Okay. But yeah, that's where he's been. So many years ago they went before, but like, dude's got a lot more hair on his body than me too. Has he always? So, always. So you don't have that to look forward to. He's had a lot more hair than this too. It's it's kind of died down. It's petered out a little bit. Oh, that's something to see, be See, here's me for. wearing my sunglasses. I'm awake. I see that. But my mouth is open. So there's a number of things that we did that I'll tell you about. But first, let I mean. Let's talk more about. Uh, Good Mythical Good Evening. Good Mythical Evening. Did we tell you about it? We already told you about it. We just want to tell you some more about it. Uh, what else can we tell you about it? Um, it's, I know that we started to plan some of the segments. We've planned most of them. And I think that. They're different. Maybe a notch up from last year. They're div- it's totally different than last year, but then kind of, this, it's, it's totally the same, but then totally fresh. No repeats. No repeats. We're trying different things this year. Things are gonna get out of hand. Things are gonna get memorable. Um, it was a once in a lifetime experience uh, that we're last gonna do year twice. that we decided to now do again, and potentially annually if you guys keep wanting us to do it. If you, if you, if you keep showing up, buying tickets for it, we'll keep doing it. Um, Good mythical, mythicaleating.com. Now this is uh, available exclusively on Moment House when it streams live. And uh, remember, you can, if you're a member of the Mythical Society, mythicalsociety.com, you can see us get ready for the show, which will involve some, you know. Sometimes the party starts before the party starts. in certain things. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a Good Mythical More. You can buy that as part of a ticket and you can get an exclusive t-shirt. Like check out all the ticket packages at goodmythicalevening.com. So we, one day we decided to go to the top of the volcano because I found out that you can drive all the way up there. Like from where we were, it's like an hour and a half drive. And yeah, there's a couple of places where it gets kind of a lot of some switchbacks. And I was like, listen, we're not doing the road to Hana, but we got to go to the top of the, the Haleakalaka, Haleakala. <laughs> Haleakaka. It takes me a couple of times to get it. So um, we're dr- we, we're driving up there, and I'm like, How do you prepare the family for this? I was like, if we they're going to get car sick. We can park. Well, I'm just like, Do they all take ginger? So yeah, we got the ginger chews, and we've got some some Dramamine. Do they all get in the front seat? Because you know, Christy's got to stay in the Christy's front seat. Christy's in the front seat. She's, but then, she's the queen. But what? The, but what are the? Because I mean, all the kids get car sick we, too. We rented a minivan, and then um, you put them on top. Because if you get the if you get the wind in the face, that, a lot of times that'll help. I mean, it's mainly just giving them a little bit of that anti uh, nausea stuff and making sure that they're not on their phones when it gets. So curvy. it worked. It did work. And the other thing I was concerned about is like, is it a long hike? But no, you drive up to the top and then there's a couple of places where you can just look out. Now the, the thing that people rave about and you have to get reservations to do this is to go up at like sunset. four o'clock, you know, sunrise. Sunrise. You know, you're at like 10,000 feet you're, and it's, you're in the middle of this island and you can, you, can see, you can watch the sunrise and you can see like all, the other, all these other Hawaiian islands. Not every single one of them, but I mean, I we didn't. I was like, we're not getting up that early. Yeah. So we didn't do that. You can also watch sunset. When I was like, yeah, we just going. If we get up there, that'll be a victory. So we drive up there. I mean, it's a, and we're like, man, there's so many clouds. What's? We're not going to see anything. But it was so high that we went above the clouds. Oh wow. Some and it was pretty amazing, even at the middle of the day. You got pictures of that above the clouds. So we're driving up there. And you don't have to hike too much in order to uh, 
you get out of the car and you're kind of just like at, at an overlook, you know? And there's an observatory up there and stuff you can see. And I was like, well, cause I don't want, I don't want to make dad and Nana have to do a bunch of walking and hiking. So like we get out and we're like, all right, you guys can go in the, in the information center slash museum. And then I'm gonna take this trail and just hike up a little bit further to this top point. So me and Lily, it was cold up there too. Like I had to put on a coat, you know, I'm cold natured. <laughs> and then we, we walk all the way up there. And then as we're coming back down, here comes granddaddy and Nana walking up there. And they said, well, if we're gonna come all this way, we're gonna do this. And I was like, good Lord, don't fall. I don't wanna have a, Rhett's mama breaking her ankle yeah, situation. Yeah, right, yeah. You don't get that free Scottish health care when you're in Hawaii. But you, oh, you didn't have to pay for any of that? No. I remember that. Yeah, you don't get that in Hawaii. We then had to like get more stuff done once you go back to the US, but I mean, the Scottish part was free. How's her ankle now, just as a side note? Is there any residual it, um, like long-term effect? Like when it when a thundercloud comes up, her it's ankle like, hurts? There, there, there is like residual pain at, at times. Not debilitating by any means, but definitely it was a it was a setback. Just one of those things. It's just like, yeah. oh, you know, I, I my ankle hurts a little bit today, kind of thing. So I don't recommend you breaking your mom's ankle on a vacation, or your dad's, or your stepmom. Everything about my dad, you know, I was I was watching him closely to see my future. Yeah, you know, because it's like I'm. I'm proud of the fact that he could do that little hike and that he could enjoy himself on vacation and that he could take a nap with his mouth gaped open. It's like, these are things that I can look forward to. Yeah, you can do that. You know? And then the next morning after we get back from Haleakala, we're like sitting at the breakfast buffet and I like, I like caught Lily's eye. And uh, then I asked, I was like, Granddad and Nana, have you guys ever been to the top of a volcano? And they were like, no, I sure would like to go. <laughs> and I, I was like, uh, that's where we went yesterday. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, I guess I, 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 I didn't ask any follow-up questions. I just thought it was hilarious. You didn't say like, anything else? I, was, I said, that's where we went yesterday. And they were like, oh, oh yeah, you're okay, you're right. <laughs> it's just like, what? Was like, what, do well, you what, not remember? Did they think it was a ride? I maybe the way I asked like it, soaring over California <laughs> I, in Disney. I, I mean, think I when thought I, asked, I went to would the you like to go fields? to the top of a volcano? They pictured an an erupting volcano yeah, like, like or something. Joe versus the volcano. So it was like it didn't really connect to like totally dormant volcano. But I'm like, yeah, that's that's. Uh, are you with me? Are you are you here for this? Do you? They had a good time. Now, wh whether they remembered it or not is another question. I've been to a non-dormant volcano. I remember, I remember you guys got in a huge argument because you were hiking to it. Any any sort of hiking, yeah, I mean, boy, it'll, it, 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 there's, it, Jesse that's, and I will find a I way. That's why I didn't do any hiking. Even though I really wanted to, no hiking. Yeah, I mean, you you, you, you had to, do, you got a plan better than we did. It was a little too last minute, but yeah. I mean, non-dormant volcanoes are even more fun. I know, I would really love to do that which is like a big highlight of going to uh, the big island. Yeah, if it's flowing. I don't know if it's flowing right now. It was flowing when you went though. Oh yeah. Not like crazy. crazy, not like a river of lava going into the ocean, but just like, oh, there it is, bubbling along, bloop, 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 hot, eventually getting into the ocean and steaming up. I don't wanna say that Maui wasn't beautiful, it's just the beaches were really the highlight. And uh, as it turns out, Scuba diving is is a big thing on at Maui. There's lots of destinations well, and that's where why, you can really enjoy and, scuba and, diving. And that's what you've been preparing well, yourself that's not, for. Yeah, that's not, I actually didn't know that. It kind of worked out, but like, yeah, I was like, we're gonna go to Hawaii. And then I was like, yeah, let, let's really get going, get into gear on this, like getting certified for scuba, looking forward to the trip. But as it turns out, like that is a highlight of being on Maui, even more so than, Kauai, like Kauai, there is you can you know you can scuba dive uh, probably in any Hawaiian island, but like Maui is actually according to the people we went with, because um, we went on two different days, 
it Maui's the best. And of course, this is just me and Lincoln because we got certified leading up to the trip. And this is a big part of what I was looking forward to. And, you know. I mean, you were living basically the White Lotus life. You know, you were the dad in White Lotus. Which, great show. Hits, and it really started to hit close to home when, yeah, it's one thing to like, yeah. And weren't you like we r- didn't, relatively close to the resort where they actually, they filmed that at the Four Seasons in Maui. Yeah, we were at the Andaz Resort, which is like next door to it. So you were next door to the set. Yes. Doing the same thing with your teenage son. Yeah. And did, they had did, that outrigger canoe that you could you could reserve and go out on that too. When, uh, when we did a trip, a day trip one day, uh, I think, yeah, that was when some other members of the family did the outrigger. Did you have an existential crisis? No, I did not. Well, the existential crisis was during the luau. I mean, you know, they had booked one night, we go to the luau, so I'll get back to the scuba diving, but the white lotus of it all to me was really that being at the luau and kind of feeling this like, okay, I'm paying this high ticket price as a tourist to come here and eat your pork and like entertain me with your history, you know? Yeah. It felt. Imperialist. It felt a little, I just feel a little uncomfortable. I mean, especially thinking of the white lotus of it all and like it was the daughter who was like woke and like laying into him and the daughter's friend who was like, you know, seeing the other side of it. I didn't know exactly how to feel about it. But it may, but it did make you think. It made you think twice about it, so you didn't just well, the blindly luau, enjoy it. The luau was, it, w- it was pretty educational about like the way, the way that they're, the, the Pacific Islanders and the you know, Hawaiian settlers, they would fish and the, all the ingenuity of the things they would do. But yeah, it's like, yeah, it just felt, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. It felt because, very American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You felt like a colonizer. It's a good show though, because it it puts it just it puts it out there. Yeah, I mean, it's an you excellent know? show for that. And the music is great too. It made you have a more difficult time enjoying your Hawaiian vacation. Right, I mission accomplished. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'll say about that. But the scuba diving of all, you know, it's I we planned a trip in like day three or day four, and then, you know, we skipped a number of days and then went to a different place. So the the first day we went out on a boat with a group of people who were all scuba diving to Molokini Crater. So you got this um you can see this like strip of land out in between our beach and uh the next island over, Lanai, and you. So it's it's half of this crater. That's that, the one that like the Microsoft guy owns most of it, right? Uh, the Oracle guy. Oracle guy. Yep, he owns basically owns all of it. It used to be that island used to be a dull pineapple farm, like the whole thing, and then he bought the whole thing, and then he's there's there's one resort on there. And then there's people who live at the top of the island and then they all work at the resort, basically. We were actually gonna stay there, but Christy didn't wanna take a second plane ride because she hates flying on planes so much. And I was like, you know what, that's fine. I don't think there's anything to do over there anyway. You can like rent a Jeep and like drive the Jeep around all over the island, which would have been fun. But yeah, we, we actually went close on our second scuba diving. But the first one was Molokini Crater and I, it was the first time for everything except technically diving, like diving off of a boat, diving with a group, like having an orientation, you know, it was all like them getting your tanks ready and everything, Every everything was new, but they made it really easy and you kinda, a, a guy jumps in the water with you and there was a group of like six of us and then Lincoln and I were of course buddies. So even though you have a guide, it's really up to you, like you have to be responsible for your own safety. You can't depend on anybody else, some guide to make sure that you're safe and to check everything for you. You gotta be responsible for yourself. That's why there's so much training and certification. But then you you learn to rely on a buddy to stay together 
and to like keep an eye on each other and communicate and and help each other. Like worst case, if you needed to get air, like if you run out of air or something goes wrong, like they can give you their spare air, that type of stuff and help you get back to the surface. So like Lincoln and I buddied up, but we were in a group that was like, you, you, you get in the water and then you descend to like 30, 40, 50 feet. And then on this first dive, he's taking us around on the outside of the crater. And it's, I mean, it's just, it's like flying beside a mountain. You know, yeah. you're just suspended in water in this like, and it's just a sheer, I would say it's like a 60 degree slope that just whoo, just goes down. And it seems like it just goes down forever. Like if you just kept, if you didn't watch yourself, you could just swim down to like a, like a, a crazy depth. It's just a- What's the maximum depth that you went to? That we went to, um, 55 feet. It's pretty deep. Yeah, and so like on your left side, as we're like curving around, it's just the whole, this whole wall of just underwater mountainside. And there's like some creatures that he would point out and s stuff like that. But then on the right, it's just, it just goes into like deep blue. It's just whoo, like straight out, straight down. It's just like, you just get this sense of just being so, Small and like a shark's gonna come out of the the blue depths, and a shark swam out of the blue depths, and like I would say it was forty feet away, but yeah, it was like a how big what kind a of? white tipped um, shark. There may be another word in there I can't remember, but like a white tipped shark. I would say it was probably um, six feet long. It was just swimming out there, and there were, at a separate point I looked out there. And there was a big ray, not a manta ray, but an an eagle ray is what they're called. So it's like, hey, this is what I was, this is kind of what you hope for. You know, you, you, you're you swimming out there and seeing this freaking wildlife. You're seeing a shark. You're seeing an eagle ray just like, oh, How big was that? This thing. Probably five feet wingspan on this thing. Oh. I mean, it was, again, it, it might have been, it might have been 40 feet away because we were staying close to the edge. And then if you, he said, at the end of this thing, there's a shark cleaning station. Shark yeah, cleaning you, station? It's not where a bunch of scuba divers go around a shark and just start scrubbing it with brushes, but it's where like little fish would, a shark would go there and- you Get the little, yeah. He, he knows that these little fishes are gonna eat this stuff out of him and just like make him all clean. Did you see this in action? Uh, we ran out of air before, uh, we got to that, you know. Everybody or just you and just, Lincoln? Just me and Lincoln. You know, this is our first dive. I've been breathing too hard. You know, you're breathing too hard. Well, actually, I looked around and I couldn't find Lincoln. I'm like, oh crap. You lost your buddy? Where is Lincoln? And they train you, like, if you lose your buddy. Panic. Yeah, just just panic. Just panic. Just start sucking in water. <laughs> crap, crap, crap your pants. <laughs> it's over for both of you. Ink. <laughs> and just do your the human version of an ink, which is like sharting. Mm-hmm. No, it's like you're supposed. If you can't see him, you look up, you look down, and then you start to ascend, and you look around again and again. But I just looked up, and I could see him up there, thirty feet, and he was already going up because he was he was like very low on air, and he kind of got a little scared. And instead of swimming over and tapping me on the shoulder and telling me, "Let's go up," here's he the signal. The buddy, buddy he, he got a little ahead of himself, and he was like, "Oh crap, I got to get out of here." But he, you know, you still have to ascend at a at a slow rate. So how many? How long? Do you approximately, um, if you're at fifty was, five I feet, think, I think it was. I think our dive was like thirty six minutes, and there were probably people who were like down there for forty five minutes. No, but once you realize that you're low on air, like what's the maximum? What's the minimum amount of time that you need in order to ascend sixty feet back to the surface? I should know that, shouldn't I? Isn't that part of like the math and stuff? Oh, I don't do math. Yeah, I mean, but high, but but, well, what, you don't let it get below 500, and then there's no issue. Like, when you're down there at 50 or 60 feet, it's like, yeah, there, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have any problem. It's like, once you get to that, but like, if you forget about it, then you, I, I actually don't know the answer to that. Don't let that happen. Well, you might need to pay, pay attention hey, or re you, read the book Listen, again. man, 
I bet Lincoln knows. But Lincoln <laughs> well, he is, is doing well with this. Like he's not, like yeah. he's enjoying it. He's not scared. A lot of it was me watching him swim around and just like getting enjoyment out of the fact that he was enjoying it. You know, the fact that I had an idea to do something and I got him to put in the work and then he's loving it. It was one of the highlights of the trip it's for basically me. Basically just like White Lotus, <laughs> except you <laughs> you succeeded. You, su- yeah. you like you succeeded in what that dad, that dad was like trying to get his son to do something to connect with him. But not really, not really yeah, succeeding. Actually, but you, you, you actually pulled it off. It worked on our account. Yeah, yeah. The second trip we did, um, we went with a different outfit. We had to drive further and then get on a different boat that went to uh, Lanai. So we're like, we're, we get to go around that island and see that the one resort on the island, and then how barren it is and how wild it is. And then is it like? Trees? Is it all trees? There's not a lot of trees. No, because they they clear cut everything for pineapples. Pineapples. So now it's just a. It's more deserty, like the type of brush and everything on it. Hmm. And our side of Maui was that way too. When you go to the other side, there's like a tremendous amount of rainfall, and it's a totally different ecosystem. Probably a lot more like the Kauai experience. I just didn't take the road to Hana, that, so I can't That's basically that. what I've heard is that Maui has, it, 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 it's the best combination of everything that you could get on the other islands, so. But you didn't go to that side, so you didn't get yeah, to see Yeah, I didn't it. go to that side. Um, I think that is my, my one regret. But that second dive trip was even better than the first one to Molokini Crater because we went to what are called the cathedrals. You've got these, Volcanic rock formations where there's all these crevasses, crevasse, and tunnels. We jump out of the boat. You and can't go in those. We get, our, we get our group together, and the first thing we did was swim down to about 35 feet, maybe 30 feet, and then I saw that some people in our group, all of a sudden, they turn on flashlights. I'm like, well, damn, I don't have a flashlight. What? This the- wasn't discussed? They mentioned something about flashlight on the boat. Like, if you have a flashlight, um, blah, blah, blah. And, I, and once they said, if you have a flashlight, I, I, I don't have one. Okay. So we start going through a bona fide tunnel, a tunnel that ended up being um, probably from wall to wall, uh, not much more than 10 feet. How long is this tunnel? 10 feet in diameter. And then I would say it... It might have been uh, 25 feet in length. It opened up to more big ocean. Yeah, yeah. Not one of these endless caves that you die in. I could kind of, no, it wasn't going down. It was totally horizontal and like, it was the first thing we went through and I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is crazy. You know, the, the main thing you're learning to do when you're learning to scuba dive is like, m- is to regulate your buoyancy, regulate your depth in the water using your, your flotation, like adding air or removing air from it so that, you know, you're not, in this case, scraping against the top or the bottom yeah. of the tunnel. It was it was so much fun. And then after that, we're going down into these like other little, little archway tunnels, like swimming through all of those type of rock formations. Oh, it was, it was such a payoff to the work that we put in to get certified. I can't wait to go scuba diving again, man. We're pl- I'm, a, I'm, I'm trying to plan a trip now for uh, me and Lincoln. I asked Chase if he wanted to go, and you know, he's the only other person at Mythical I know of who's scuba certified, to go out to the Channel Islands yeah. and, and do that. But there were, there were dudes with beards, man. You're saying you don't wanna do it because you got this mustache no, no, I've been, I, I, You gotta figure it out, I've dude. heard many people say that you can you figure it out. You would absolutely love it. But I, uh, I, in the little bit of snorkeling that I've done when I like used the stuff that they said to use, like the silicone like stuff, you know, it was just like, uh, I need to, I have to get somebody who actually knows what to do to tell me what to do versus yeah. just going on the internet and, you know. You, you I, it's totally, I mean, you gotta figure it out. Like, Shepard's a strong swimmer, right? Yeah. He would love it. I yeah, wouldn't, he'd be, I, he'd be I, into it. I, you know I'm not a strong swimmer. It's not about that, but like, you're so comfortable in the water. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely intrigued by it. I, I, I mean, I was thinking about um, going spearfishing with a friend that that does that because that's more just like put on the snorkel and hold your breath for a long time, which I can do. Yeah, but, you can do that. Um, no, I'm definitely, I'm definitely interested in it, and I think Shepard, I know Shepard would be into it. He would be like, "Sure, I'll do it." Yeah, it's, it's, it's. I mean, and I wasn't. I still am not comfortable enough to like completely enjoy myself because. Again, everything and taking out a boat and going with a guide and like people giving you orientation and all that, everything's still so new. And then you get in the water and you're like, you're, you're learning how to use the dive computer and how to follow people, but not too close. You know, everything's kind of, you're figuring it out. And I, yeah. So there was a lot on my mind. But I, my instructor told me, it's like, after you get a certain amount of dives under your belt, then it becomes this total zen experience. You stop thinking about it. Where you can be, you know, being in the water is totally being in the moment. And he said, and when you come back out on land, you look at the world differently. You start to look uh, vertically. Like you, we tend to work in like a horizontal plane, you know, because yeah. we're, we're not birds. But he said you start to bring more of that back into your experience on land. Have you been looking up more? I, you start looking up more. Took a walk from my house, and I was like, "Oh, look at the trees up there." I wonder if I could fly up there to them. Just woo, just kind of float up. It's it's. Don't get any ideas. It's great, man. That's a whole other thing is to get those, uh, um, get those fan, the backpack fans. Maybe I get into that. What do you mean a back? Oh. You're talking about a like a jetpack powered parachute. Oh, yeah. Jesse won't let me know. She, she's she's afraid I'm going to die. This is better than that. It's but it's yeah, there's a lot more freedom and there's not like and a it's propeller. Safe. It's safer. It's got to be safe. It's definitely safer. We also did an ATV trip, which um, was not nearly as good as the ATV trip that like y when we were in Kauai and we went with our the boys. And we were yeah. like, we we're like in those quads and like going through, we went through this like bamboo forest and we went to this place that had a Why was waterfall. It good? Well, this, this was on an old pineapple farm. There's so many of them in Maui and they were, they they were given permission to turn it, since they're not growing pineapples anymore, to rejuvenate. Who grows the pineapples now? They're not growing any, they are or in Lanai, I don't know. I think they're all grown in a lab, man. Mm. But you got this, so, so you got this ATV course and there's like all of this black plastic coming up. And so they stop and explain at a certain point, there are layers upon layers of black plastic. Have you, it, you see like gardens oh, where yeah, yeah, yeah. people would plant stuff and like to keep the weeds. part of the farming. Yeah. Keep the weeds out, they'll like poke a hole and plant something and then They'll water underneath the plastic, so it's it, it, it conserves water, yeah. and it it's it was a farming technique that actually destroyed the land there. Where what they would do is, after a season of pineapples, then they would like till it up, and then put another layer of plastic, and just do that again and again to the point where it's like you go eight, ten, twelve, sixteen feet down, and it's just layers of plastic. What? Where they would just decimate the land. People do so much stupid stuff. I man. know it was so depressing, but the the cool thing about the ATV place we went was that like they're rehabilitating the land. There's no way you can pull out all that plastic, but what you can do is that you can replant um, trees on top of it. And like there was a whole part that they had never planted uh, pineapples up on the hill, and so there were still a forest up there. And they said. Look up there, you see all the rain, see all the rain clouds above the forest? It's like the reason why they planted pineapples here was because all of that rain was down here. And what I didn't realize was that once they that the forest actually it's making the rain. It makes the rain. And it it you know, it draws in all the moisture. And so then when you when you cut it down thinking, "Oh, we're going to take use of all this moisture to to make pineapples." All of a sudden, the rain disappears. So they discover that the hard way. So there's a lot of rehabilitation that's going on, but it doesn't make for the most fun ATVing experience because the landscape was not that dynamic. 
Right. So I between I would recommend going on an ATV in Kauai, but not on that that part of Maui at least. It just wasn't it just wasn't the most fun thing we've ever done. Were you getting any good food? You haven't talked about the food yet. Besides the breakfast. We ate some good fish. But you don't seem that you impressed. Yeah, I don't the 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 food wasn't a big thing for me. You don't really like sushi. Nope. So you miss. We ate some, the 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 kids ate some sushi. Christy ate some sushi, but no, nah, that's not for me. I mean, the one thing we did experience, and Dad said this was like one of his favorite things, was we went to a place called CoconutInformation dot com, which if that's not the catchiest name for something, that sounds like a website to me. It sounds like a website, but there's this guy Ryan who. He has this, um, he has this like outpost. Information about coconuts. And he's planted all these coconuts and he just, it was an enthralling experience going, our travel agent told us to go because Guy Fieri went there. And so you can, you can see coconut information featured with Guy Fieri on one of his shows on Food Network. So like after that aired, we like booked well in advance to go see Ryan and hear about his coconuts. And he gave us this whole education on on coconuts. Just like the age of the coconut determines like what the what the coconut milk tastes like. How fascinating is coconut information, really? I we had a we had a lot of fun. You was one of your dad's favorite things? My dad said it was one of his favorite things. Okay. I had a good time. It was. Did great. they put alcohol in the coconuts? No, it was just. It was just information. It was just. Well, it was, and it was coconut milk, and we made. We took the coconut meat and we made these. Made it into noodles. We did that, so it was like a little bit of a cooking. But well, you don't even like coconut. I don't like dried coconut on like a cake, but you know what I love? Coconut water. <laughs> That's what I discovered. It's magical. It's got like electrolytes you did, you in it. You discovered coconut water on this trip. No, I, I drank coconut water in Thailand yeah. when I went there. The guy would hack open a coconut and I'd stick a straw down in it and drink yeah, it right it's there. It's delightful. Along with some corn. Yeah. But uh, once I got back home, I started buying coconut water. It's great. A lot of electrolytes, Red. You like coconut water? Yeah. We we, we, we have it regularly in uh, in the... For the, like the outside fridge next Gotta to the pool. Gotta keep it real cold. Um, did you and, you, and forgive me if you talked about this on Dispatches from Myrtle Beach, but given the fact that your dad is, um, you know, into being recognized, mm. did you meet any mythical beasts while you two were together? Because that seems like that would be a pretty cool experience for some mythical beasts. Well, the the, the, the podcast was so fresh. Like I think episode one had come out while we were there. But there were a couple of, I actually, I think he was disappointed because instead of him yeah. getting recognized, I was just getting recognized. He was like, well, hey, I'm his dad. He never said that. He would just, <laughs> at a couple of times, he would be behind me and I would be like at the breakfast buffet when we exited. I was like, where's dad? And then a few minutes later, he comes up and he's like, well, there was people back there that recognized you, but you were gone. So I went over and talked to him. <laughs> He's got a picture and everything. It's like, Dad, you got to keep moving sometimes. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was thinking. He was like, why didn't you stop? He's like, well, how can I? You know, so he he took my leftovers, basically. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I I did get recognized. So maybe next time y'all go on vacation together. Oh, it just, it'll be the two be, of you yeah. getting recognized together. Yeah. But I'm trying to think which was more formative to our relationship, us going on vacation together or us making our podcast together. The, the one-two punch of both of those things has like really opened up our relationship. But you're saying nice. that there's no fights, no conflict, no, no, no conflict to note, no. Well, I think the key was- we even, let, even between the kids? We let Lily do what she, what she wanted to do when she wanted to do it. Like we gave her her space. But a lot of times kids, you know, you know the the age difference between Lincoln and Lando. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't. So Lincoln and Lando being you know seventeen and twelve, right? Yeah. Um, 
which is essentially the same age difference as Locke and Shepard. Right. Um, do they do, like, would they be like, hey, Lincoln and Lando are going to do this thing together. Like, they're going across the resort, the two of them together. Like, is that a thing that happens? A little bit. Like, a couple of times they would do that. Like, Because kids, if they don't do that, then they'll, they'll get bored. Yeah. Lincoln was meeting other people his age. Like, he was the one who was, oh. like, making other friends. Did he make any romantic connections? He, didn't, he did not make any romantic connections. If he did, well, if he I don't did, think he he'd want he me would, talking he, about it. Well, he wouldn't tell you anyway, probably. You probably wouldn't. You don't know what he did. Every time we'd walk around the resort, be like, what's up? Like, he would know people. He'd know people over here. He'd know this guy over here. And then I, one morning I opened up the fridge and there's like beers in there that we didn't. I was like, where does this beer come from? Well, my, my friends, my hey, people. Yeah, Lincoln was like, my, uh, my friends, they were leaving and they they offered me the beer. And I was like, what? He was like, I didn't drink any of it. I, I just got put it, for it in you. the fridge. So you and granddad could drink it. Yeah, he did. Uh, and then what about Lando? I mean, because at that age, like, I'll talk. I'm talking about my vacation next week, but like, Shepard being by himself essentially with us as a yeah. 13 year old, there's a you know. Yeah, Lando needed there was a little, a bit, little more, bit of a boredom thing that yeah, ended up happening. That 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 was one of the factors. Like, Lando got a little bored. You yeah. know, I think once you get to be uh, a teenager. You can retreat into your phone a little bit, and you kind of want to watch your shows and just be be on your own or make your own friends. But yeah, yeah so it's like Lando is a kind of a, a a tough age where it was like, let's do something together. So it's like, all right, let's go snorkeling. Let's play. We had a cornhole set out there. We did some stuff like that. So like, you know, kept him engaged. And I think that's why like the nine days of it all was like good. Versus it pushing it too far or like going to a second location. Yeah. Which would have been way too much. <laughs> but the injury, I forgot to tell you about the yes. injury. Uh, Dad normally throws Nana under the bus on dispatches because she he's always dishing some dirt, but I guess I'll have to do this one because he didn't talk about it. She was putting her her leg up on the sink in order to I think to shave her leg or something. <laughs> and she like, <laughs> she fell over and hit her, hit her like the her shin, Oy. like super hard and like made a, got a big old whelp. And I was, I was like, oh, is this the, is this it? This is like, this is like day two of vacation. I'm like, oh man, is she going to be able to walk? I think, I think she was in a lot of pain, but she didn't want to, she kind of, she was a trooper. She just kind of. Went along with it. We iced it, and then she was okay. Put some okay. ice on it. Walk it she off. She was okay, but she, so there was no break. But that that was the injury I was referring to. Was that? But she was okay after that. She was able to like walk around. She was able to walk around, but I think she for the next day she was in a lot of pain. And speaking of pain, I think one and you know what this can be my recommendation because I think this is my wreck this week. Oh uh, yep. Mm -hmm. When you're going on a beach vacation and you want to do a little spa treatment, especially if you're like me and you wanna get a massage. Like I, well in advance, I was like, I'm gonna book a massage, me and Christy are gonna do a massage, I'm gonna give dad and Nancy a massage, they're gonna love it. Like I was, we did it on, if you're gonna do that on a beach vacation, do it on day one or day two. Don't even wait to day three or day four because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get sunburnt and then you're gonna have this like really nice spa treatment that you're gonna, it's gonna turn into torture. Like I didn't get sunburn, but Christy did. Even my dad got sunburn, I couldn't believe it. I was like. They got sunburn? On day one. Really? Like when my dad's sitting out there with his mouth gaped open just just you, drinking a. You, I mean, this is like vacation etiquette. I Remember, know. You, know like you got a sunscreen up, son. I know, but like, and Lincoln had never gotten Sunburn in his life apparently because he was asking me, "Well, Dad, what, what's, what's going to happen?" <laughs> I was like, "You're going to hurt, son. You're going to hurt." Now I didn't get him a massage, so he didn't have to worry about it. But like he that the third morning, he, I was like, "How'd you sleep?" He was like, "I couldn't sleep. Everywhere I turned, I was like, yeah, you got sunburn.'" Well, he learned a lesson. And That's then whenever later on in the week, like towards the end of the vacation, is when it's like 
He wasn't in pain anymore, but it started to peel. And he was like, Dad. Am I going to die? He said, what? Will what, it grow back? What's going to happen? Just one of the seven layers of skin that will never grow back. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is, you, you, you'll be fine. But this is, the, this is the best way to learn a lesson. But like, even Christy, with all her years of like, yeah, you can't, knowing you how to can't like not get sunburned. I was like, man, you just, you just totally put your whole massage in jeopardy. What did, how did it work out? She had to get one of those like, oh, barely touch me massages. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, but, that yeah, sucks. but you don't pay by the pressure, you pay by the time. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hey, listen, that's why I'm, I, t- I was telling y'all to slather up. But the, I think the key is, if you're getting a massage on a beach vacation, get it right when you get there. Or just wear sunscreen. <laughs> or get it I mean, day two. There's, there's, and then there's if you want to get that, this. if you got to work that base tan, you can do it after that. So, again, it was a great trip. Honestly, I feel like not a lot of sensational stuff to report. I think that kind of wraps it up for me here with my Maui trip. But I think the best vacations. Maybe they don't make for the best podcast. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll a little find, even keel. We'll find out next week because my vacation sucked. <laughs> oh yeah, I yeah, think that'll yeah, make yeah, yeah, that'll yeah, make yeah. for an interesting podcast. Yeah, I legitimately at one point said, "I hate this f- vacation." Wow. Yeah, in front of my whole family. Uh, so we can talk about. Um, That's a good example. We, we, we can we can talk about kids. how I how I got to that point. So you threw a tantrum. Uh, maybe you maybe my dad should have been on your vacation. Did like <laughs> so you'd have been so you wouldn't have thrown a tantrum. You hated it. Uh, actually, dude, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I it. Uh, let me just say that there were some circumstances which I will get into next week that made it not as enjoyable as it could, and there was a moment in which I said that. Uh, mm. But there were some highlights that I think ultimately maybe redeemed it, at least to some degree. I'm excited to talk about it. Uh, but it definitely was not one of my best vacations. Better ever. to have a good story than a good time. Yeah, well, I've got that. But I had a good time. Wish you were there, man. But it's okay that you weren't. <laughs> it seems like you need to have a crappy <laughs> vacation. I can't be everywhere. <laughs> Although, I, I, I mean, how many times were you asked, where's Rhett? Because... I got asked where's Link at least 10 times over the past, you know, over the course of two weeks. Oh yeah, yeah. every time I got recognized. Where's Link? I, I th- he's probably having a better time than me. Like top of the volcano, it was a it was a big group from Kansas who, who they were taking a cruise from across every Hawaiian island. And, th- and they said that they were, when they, they were freaking out when they saw me at the top of the volcano. And they were like, we were listening to I'm on vacation on repeat as a family and right right before this <laughs> and now I'm seeing you and they're like where's Rhett and I was like he's coming up the mountain like I that's what I would tell people <laughs> he's right I, behind me just look like, out for him people kept people every time people saw me and they would ask I made them start they would they spent the rest of the day looking for you you didn't tell me you were <laughs> you were pulling their legs it's just a dumb question I'm like he's not automatically here I always just say I don't know <laughs> I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I mean, He's coming up. You want me to bring up five com- my friends? Coming right around now? the mountain when he comes. <laughs> All right, we'll be coming around the mountain next week, so Rhett can tell you about the worst vacation. Yeah. He's ever had. Uh, maybe not that. Your crappy vacation. Hey, Rhett Link. I am literally listening to you guys on uh, what you could not live without during high school. Brett just referred to the kefir, kimchi, and kombucha. I have a name for you. It is the fermented K's. That's it. They're all fermented. Fermented K's, we're good to go. Did I mention that my name was Cam from Riverside? I'm sorry if I skipped that. Have a good one. Hi, this is John uh, from San Diego. And you mentioned your 3K diet. Um, Might have a better name for you. Um, Since uh, kefir is kind of a yogurt, you can just say... YKK, and even better yet, you can call it the Y2K diet. Um, hope you have a good one, and uh, I'll keep listening. Thanks. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm just listening to an ear biscuit, and you guys are talking about having Keeper, loving Keeper. Um, my name is Keeper, and I'm very confused and thrown off. Flattered, but confused and thrown off. <laughs> have a good one, y'all. 
To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.